Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Drone Life News. My name is Paul, and joining me, as always, the editor in chief of dronelife.com. Miriam, thank you for joining me today, as always. Always fun to be here. What are we going to talk about today? Gosh, there's so much. I mean, there, you know, Miriam, uh, this kind of brings us right into our first piece of news. It seems like there are a lot of drone manufacturers once again announcing new products, leaking new products. And at these recent conferences, it seems like Autel has now launched a micro drone, kind of similar to what many people would call the Mini 2 or Mini SE. But it seems like this particular aircraft actually has some very unique uh, features to it. So what do you have here on the Autel mini drone? Is that the Nano? It's the Nano. It's the Nano. Yeah. So Autel um, announced two new drones this week, which will be available later this fall. So um, just in a month or so. One is the Autel Evo Nano series which I guess you could say is sort of like the DJI Mini, very lightweight, comes in at 249 grams, designed to kind of fit that niche, highly functional, very small and lightweight. And the other uh, was the Evo Lite series, that's L-I-T-E. And both of these really had some looked like they had some great features. So obviously I have not had an opportunity to see a working review of one, but um, looked like there were some really cool features among them. Certainly um, that improved connectivity, which I think will be uh, really good for flyers. Also a lot of features towards good content creation. And I think that that's where you're really seeing the kind of crossover between the recreational and the commercial pilot, the person who might do a little of both, you know, have their part 107 and fly for their own content creation and sometimes for their clients' content creation, but a real focus on photography, video, and content creation. What do you think? Well, a couple of things I actually noticed that were really interesting, and I didn't see that there were two versions, so uh, my apologies, but one of the versions... You mentioned that it's got the world's first four-axis gimbal design. And I think this might actually be really uh, powerful for drone creators. And I haven't actually, I haven't seen anything about this. So to see it on Drone Life is uh, pretty cool. But what am I talking about? Vertical video creation. Many of you know that with yes. uh, Instagram and TikTok, we can only shoot vertical videos. And so I think it's actually really cool that they have a vertical video integration. And it also seems like they're throwing a pretty large sensor in this thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, like I said, I had the opportunity to talk to Autel at the last conference I was at. You know, they really got the message across, hey, we are about listening to our customers, incremental improvements, keeping our reliability you know, high function going, but some of these improvements are really look great. And definitely, like you said, this one, they advertise as a world's first. Very interesting. So is it the Evo Lite that has the vertical video or is it the Nano? Because it looks like that the, the drones look almost identical, frankly. Uh, sorry, I would have to go back and check. Read the article on Drone Life, guys. You'll see. <laughs> All will become clear. <laughs> so that's the actual announcements. What do we got on the leaks? What are we hearing about the DJI Mavic 3? We're still going back and forth here between two uh, well-known Chinese manufacturers kind of doing the buzz this week. So we've got Atel and we've got DJI where the leaks keep coming on the Mavic 3. What do you think? The Mavic 3 leaks still keep coming out. We've seen photos uh, leaked on it, and it does look just like the models that we've seen with a Mavic 3 Cine model having two cameras, that kind of zoomed camera, and that larger, uh, large sensor micro four-thirds wide angle camera. And once again, you know, this kind of goes back to, you know, what we talked about before the Nano and the Evo Lite. Uh, which is, you know, we, we keep hearing about all these drones coming out, some of them announced, some of them unannounced or leaked like the Mavic 3. 
I think the real question, Miriam, is when are these damn drones going to hit the market? Because we know the chip shortage, uh, as we got uh, GM's results in on the street last week, their sales are down 33% because they simply don't have vehicles to sell. And if we also look at American manufacturers, uh, we're not really seeing a lot of innovation from American manufacturers. You know, uh, Skydio is focusing more on their their software stuff and Autel and DJI are, are launching a bunch of new stuff, but when does it hit the market? Yeah, really interesting question. And um, as I mentioned, Autel said later uh, in the fall, so we'll see if um, they can they can get that out before December. It is really a challenge um, for these people. I mean, Parrot Anafi AI was announced um, quite a while ago, and now it's just um, starting to come out. So I think it's across the board. I mean, I went shoe shopping with my son this weekend, and and they said. Yeah, if you want a Nike, good luck. <laughs> like, order it for next Christmas now because, um, you know, the entire shipping industry and the import export has has just been snarled for uh, months and months. So, we'll see. I mean, that's that's obviously got to affect drone manufacturers in the same way it affects all other kinds of manufacturers. Um, really, no knock on them. I think uh, there's there's nothing any of them can do to speed that up but uh hopefully things will um become freer pretty soon yeah it should be interesting to see uh how it all plays out because i know a lot of popular drones that we're uh we can buy are quickly selling out uh i know someone was looking for a mavic 2 pro and and wasn't able to find one so uh honestly i find it very 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 interesting and uh, overall, it's just, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very interesting to see how the next year plays out, you know, with the remote ID lawsuit, with the chip shortage, the labor shortage, you know, there's, there's a lot that's really, uh, that's coming down the pipe. And I know uh, we had recently talked to uh, someone in a government agency who had recently purchased the Quantum Systems drone, I think months ago and still hasn't taken receipt on that aircraft either. So this issue seems to be quite systemic throughout the entire industry. I think it is. And, you know, there's um, additional pieces to it. There's the portion you mentioned of not being able to get components and chips. Um, there's also for anything that is not manufactured uh, in your country, the shipping industry has really taken a huge hit. And so with COVID requirements differing on every shore, uh, in every port, they're really struggling to get, you know, stuff just off of a boat on shore. There's, there's delays there. There's delays in the trucking industry industry, certainly, you know, the gas shortage in, in England that was caused strictly because of a lack of, of truck drivers. So the labor shortage is kind of affecting everything. So I think it's the drone industry along with everybody else, and it is going to have an impact. Definitely going to have an impact. Well, uh, that brings us to our next story, which it looks like Matterport, or Matternet, excuse me, use the wrong name, Matternet, uh, is now utilizing, it looks like, kind of uh, bays and stations for drone delivery. Now, this is kind of a first that we've seen from all the companies touting drone delivery. So what's going on here and why does it matter? So this is an absolutely fascinating story to look at. And I would encourage anybody to go out and look for images of this station because I remember back, I, I think it might have been 2018, writing a story about the Matternet station winning actually architectural design awards because it is beautiful. It is really just aesthetically um, a lovely piece of equipment here. But what the Matternet station does is it kind of helps to automate drone delivery and make it 
less expensive to scale. So if you think about one of MatterNet's um, first kind of widespread implementations here in this country, that's with UPS on the Wake Forest Medical Campus doing medical drone deliveries between hospital buildings. So they're doing things like sending samples to the lab, which may be, you know, in a completely different building on another end of the campus or sending results back and forth, different um, supplies like that. And what the MatterNet station allows for is a little bit of self-service. It says this is a secured base station allowable only with appropriate access. So only certain people would have access to it. But it would mean that, you know, individual healthcare providers could send the drone out. Somebody else who needed the results could go out to the station and get their payload. So it really does sort of allow more scale. Like you need fewer people to just fly the drone and more people just kind of using the drone as a tool to go do their business. So automates it, very interesting model. Um, we will see how that works. Some of the first commercial deployments taking place uh, in Switzerland now, and um, we'll see how those work. And if those are sort of adopted as a means of really scaling drone delivery for things like mail delivery uh, on for things like delivery on large campuses. You know, you, we have the medical campus, but it would work just as well on like a Microsoft campus or an Apple campus or a Google campus, any place, uh, any sort of warehousing manufacturing center where there's large um, areas. So. Wow, very we'll see what happens. But they are beautiful and really interesting looking. So worth worth taking a look at. It definitely looks like something out of Avatar, but it reminds me, you know, all the movies in the eighties of, you know, cars pulling ATMs away to take all the cash. I wonder if this is the next uh the next blockbuster action movie of taking one of these things <laughs> down. Oh, man. Sorry to be a little cynical. I just thought it would be funny. So <laughs> it would, but it does solve a lot of problems, you know, in security and in tracking and. Having a station really solves a lot of problems in sort of being able to keep track of who was there, who took a shipment, who sent a shipment, et cetera. Yeah, actually, as you say, that could be uh, important for verified delivery and whatnot or certificate of delivery. That could be uh, very interesting. So, well, Miriam, thank you again for uh, all the information today. Short week as far as news is concerned. Is there anything exciting on the horizon for us? Paul, there is always something exciting on the horizon for us. Um, I know one that I'm writing currently is uh, more about New Air, sort of 50-mile drone corridor, really interesting stuff happening out there. Um, we have AOPA, AOPA, the Association um of owners, pilots, aircraft, something. Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, that's it. Giving some uh, thanks to the FAA for changing um, some of the rules around educational flight and, and allowing things like that. And um, always something interesting happening in the drone industry, Paul. Definitely, definitely. Well, Miriam, thank you so much for your time this week. Uh, definitely appreciate it. All right, take care. See you next week. Sounds good. And we'll see all of you next week as well. Thank you again for joining us. And if you have any comments or suggestions on stories, don't be afraid to send them in. You can comment uh, on our YouTube video or you can go to Ask Drone You and upload anything that you do have. Thanks again for joining us. And this is another edition of Drone Life News. <laughs>